Let's speak to Carol Warner, who's from Guide Dogs for the Blind. Uh, Carol, thank you for coming in. It's a really difficult situation. I can appreciate exactly how complicated this is for the charity as well, because it's one of your puppies that you give to the Johnsons to train up, and at some point, that dog, hopefully, will be good enough to be able to go on to its next stage of training, so they were going to say goodbye. But this is a very, very different case, isn't it? And they were very keen to have this sick puppy that they've bonded stay in the family. Mm -hmm. Why can't they keep him? It's a, it is a very complicated situation, and we fully understand how upsetting it is for the Reese Johnson family and everyone involved. The decision we've made has been very difficult, but we've done it with, in discussion with Rihanna and our veterinary experts. Um, bearing in mind the, Edward's prognosis, uh, we need to provide him with ongoing care that is best for him. He's gone to a, a specialist volunteer, someone who's experienced in looking after a dog that that's, has health problems and also experienced with dealing with end-of-life care. Um, all this, this person is also very close to our National Breeding Centre where we have our veterinary nursing team, access to 24-hour veterinary care and a cardiologist that's 20 minutes up the road. So we have to be very conscious of, of what um, Edward's longer on long-term prognosis is, how poorly he's going to be and the possible effect that might have on the family. Mm. But we really do support, uh, we really appreciate the support that we get from all our volunteers. If it wasn't for families like the Reese Johnsons, guide dogs wouldn't be able to uh, change lives for hundreds of guide dogs, uh, guide dog owners um, and people with sight loss. Yeah, I mean it's such a difficult situation as you say Ben, but how, and the family I know do understand the condition have said that they emotionally could cope with it and they discussed it openly with their children tell us exactly what that dog is going to go yeah. through now it's such a sad story it isn't it my heart goes out yeah. and to you guys of this situation but um this condition is, is a serious condition uh, sub aortic stenosis essentially it's a narrowing of the um the main vessel that comes out of the heart so mm -hmm. basically when the heart's pumping blood through the body that narrowing uh, makes it harder for the heart to pump the blood through now if you can imagine in a very small puppy uh, there's not a huge amount of blood to pump and there's not a lot of body mm. to pump it round so the puppy copes but as as, as the dog grows um, that heart has to work a lot harder uh, and the demands on it become you know a lot more intense and eventually that heart will fail and this isn't like a human condition you can't have a stent or anything put in to a puppy can you or a dog so you, you can um, it's, it's not actually a stent it's a, a they, they use a balloon um, that mm. they can use in certain situations to to expand that narrowing uh, but it's not it's not suitable in all, all conditions it doesn't actually um, there's no evidence to say that it extends the lifespan of these dogs. No. And um, Rhiannon, if we could just come back to you, because we, you, you, I, I don't doubt for a minute you've been kept in touch with Guide Dogs for the Blind, and, and as Carol's pointed out, there's going to be an awful lot of expense and time and medical care that Edward's going to need. But I wonder whether you've been doing this for four yes. years. Has this changed your feeling towards training these guide dog puppies and the fact that you just can't keep Edward and keep him in the family? W would you do it again? Will you volunteer to have another one? I really don't know, to be honest. Um, you know, it, it's it's just been absolutely um, heart wrenching. Um, but the amount of you know, but I just never expected it um, from Lewis setting up the peti um, petition and making one phone call to Wales Online. I just we just never expected, um, and we're so grateful to all the support that we've had. Um, but I don't know what um, what the future will be now. Um, you know, we, we, we just can't, we just can't stop thinking about Edward at the moment, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure you'll be allowed to, to visit him and say your goodbyes, I'm sure. Well, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it, that look, clearly you've invested a lot of time and effort, and I know that the, the process of getting Edward settled in the family was, was important as well. I hope, I hope that all of you down there can feel that you can do it in the future, because as Carol said, the work that you do and the other volunteers is absolutely vital. Uh, are crucial to the success Absolutely. and we know the difference guide dogs uh, can make but fingers crossed that you can um, you can somehow sort yourselves out and, and, and get past that Rhiannon but we really appreciate you joining us this morning and, and, and well sharing done, the story. Lewis, as yeah. well. well done.